and ready tutorial on making some movement inputs for apps on tablets using Clicked Infusion. So we're going to start a new application and we're going to go straight away and change the application properties of the window size. And we're going to click on the 640 by 480 and change it to 1280 by 720, which is 720p just below Full HD. Now if we click in a gray area or an area off those numbers, it asks us, would you like to modify the frames to match the application window? Yes, we want our levels to be the same size. So click yes. And then we're going to go into our frame editor. I'm just going to double click here. And because my screen size is similar to that size that we're doing, I'm going to zoom out to 50%. But you can also do that on view, zoom, and choose your percentage there. So we're going to insert a new object. And it's going to be an active object. And the first type of movement I'm going to show is just the fact of repositioning something where you click. A click on the screen is going to be the same as a tap on a tablet. So if we go into our event editor and if we click new condition, it's to do with the mouse and it's to do holding down while we click. So repeat while the mouse key is pressed, the left button, repeat while the mouse left key is pressed and right click underneath our active object. We're going to click on position, set the X coordinate and we're going to get the X coordinate of where the mouse, the X position of the mouse. And then we're going to right click on the same tick. Remember to right click, set the Y coordinate to be, you guessed it, the Y position of the mouse. Now if we, oops, if we run the application now, you can see that we can move the mouse about the screen and nothing happens. But when we click and hold, then our object follows us. It does allow us to teleport though and jump from place to place, which you might want on your app. Or you might not. So if you don't want that, we're going to add another active object and we're going to go back to our frame editor and we're going to insert another active object. And I'm going to rename it. I'm pressing F2 and I'm just going to call this follower. I'm also going to change the way it looks, double clicking on it, just so that it's a bit, cl it's a bit clearer of what's happening. And you can draw a filled in circle. There you go, that's rough enough. And I'm going to change its movement to have a movement of bouncing ball, normal bouncing ball, not physics, and I'm not going to have it moving at start. Then in our event editors, I'm going to say while the left mouse key is pressed, they're going to right click underneath this follower, movement start, so it starts moving. And um, I'm also going to say the direction, look in the direction of, and I'm going to click on our active object, the thing that follows the mouse. So relative to active, zero, zero. If you can't see that because this window's over it, you can just click on relative to and you get a list of what there is. So there we go. Now, if I run the application, we now have that red dot following us. But if I let go, off it goes. Um, so I want a new condition that when the red follower collision with another object, the diamond, that then I want its movement to stop. And it's just going to stop and start with that speed set in its movement properties of 60. So if I up that to 200, let's see how that runs, run the frame, there we go. So there it is now following me totally. There's things you can do to smooth it off because you find that it'll jabber about and uh, go up and down while it's on top. And there's things you can do to change that. But this is just a quick tutorial about that movement. And I'm going to go on to talk about force movement. So I'm going to insert a new frame, right clicking on application one or your application name, new frame, frame two. Let's go into that. So in frame two, we're going to insert a new object, an active object, drop it down. And this time it's going to be physics controlled. We're going to have it physics static movement. Now it says to insert a physics engine. So let's do that. So insert a new object. The physics engine contains all the physical rules for the world about gravity and about um, friction, elasticity, and stuff like that. So now if we test this frame. So run frame, F7, not the application. And there we see it falls down. So we want it to stay in the window. So we're going to click new condition when it's a position, test the position, and we're going to make sure that it doesn't leave on the left, the right, the bottom and the top. Um, and we want it to stop movement, stop, and so it will just stop 
resting on its point. There we go. And quit. Right, so um, we are now going to add another object in, and this is going to be an arrow, so an active object. And to make it an arrow, all I'm going to do is fill it in red, loads of tolerance on it. And I'm just going to rub out a bit. Now, remember that when you draw for your animations, it's pointing to the right. So we want our arrow pointing to the right. So oh, it's a bit of a slim bit on that arrow. But that'll do. And we're going to set a new condition to always happen. So new condition. On the cogs, it's special always. Always. And right click underneath this arrow. And we always want the angle of this to be set to wherever the mouse is. So we're going to get from, we're going to use the calculator here, this equation editor. And we're going to right click on the arrow. And we're going to get from the position the angle of a vector and it's going to be where the mouse is x and y so from wherever that active two object is to where the mouse is get that angle and set that angle and we'll do it at maximum speed so run the frame there we go we've now got that facing brilliant now we'll control gravity we'll say gravity always is so right click in the in the physics engine in your world let's change the world let's make it a better place for you and for me and for the gravity angle so and we want to set the gravity angle to just be the angle of the uh, arrow because that's that changes with the mouse so there we go so we can make gravity go down gravity go up gravity go to the side and there we go we can throw it about like it's um in an airplane falling through the sky we're now going to copy this frame. So right click, copy this frame, and then right click on the frame again and paste. And I'm going to press F2 to name it at frame three. We're going to change some of these rules. We're going to um, make it so that the arrow is attached to the diamond. So always set the angle and always position. Select the position to be relative to the diamond. Okay. So let's have a look at that. Great. Now at any point, if there's something that you've created that you want to hide, you can do that in just its um, display options, visible at start. If you turn that off, it'll be invisible. Um, but So I'm going to leave the arrow visible at the moment, and I'm going to get rid of this always uh, set the gravity. We're not going to do that. We're just going to always set the angle, um, and we're going to make a new condition. And that's going to be the mouse, user clicks, and left click, which is the same as tapping on the screen. So if we click with a left click, I want to apply a force to move the diamond. So uh, movement, physics, apply a force. Now with a force, you need an amount. I'm going to set it quite high, 200. It's only a small object. You can Sometimes you need massive forces because the size of your object and the density of the object means a force needs to be big to move it. And then I'll ask for the angle, and the angle is going to be where the arrow is. So uh, angle, get the angle. Now if we try that out, F7 or run frame. If I click, it'll apply a force, and the force will stay applied forever because no other force is acting on it. So let's close that, and let's set a timed event. So. Uh, under the timer, right click, fire an event after a given delay, um, and we're going to do it in hundredths of seconds, centiseconds. We're going to do t after 10 centiseconds, we're going to run an event called stop. Now, that event doesn't exist until we press new condition, and under the clock, we're going to choose on event and type exactly the same word in stop. So, on event stop, we're going to right click under the diamond movement physics stop force, stop all the forces happening to it. So, here we go. So now if I click upwards, there we go. If I multiply click, it should be able to apply a bit more force. There we go. So I'm now equivalent of blowing a ping pong ball around a room uh, or around a table. I'm applying a force. Now, the gravity is always pulling it back down. Gravity does that. It gets you down. So if I click on the diamond and go to its movement options, I'm just going to set gravity to zero. And then it gives us something a bit more interesting because it means that we can click and something will glide and it will just glide like that. Now, if you notice, if I'm holding down, 
it's not affecting it for much longer. That's just because it's only doing the instance I click. I can always change that. I can right click and replace that with uh, the mouse repeat or mouse key is pressed. And then we get this more fun sort of gravitational force pulling it into wherever I'm clicking. And there you go, yeah, orbiting around like that. We can set some deceleration on it, uh, on the active object, because it hasn't got any, I don't think. Uh, deceleration, five, there we go. Let's try that so, so that the force actually wears off after a while. It doesn't want to continually move and glide forever. It's not like riding on ice. Set it to 40, something much larger. So then if I click, it'll move a bit, which allows me to get it to move around. There we go, caught in my orbit. And there's some movement types. And like I said, you can turn the visibility off on the arrow. Uh, so if we click on the arrow and under its display options, change off visible if we run the frame. When we're tapping on the screen, it allows us to move our object around. You could use some buttons on the screen and have active objects. And when the mouse clicks on an active object, you could apply force in a set direction. Um, but it just allows you to use physics in a nice way to control movement of an object on a screen. There you go. Make a choice and decide what what type of those four different movements you'd like from the different frames that you'd like to use in your app.